Hello there! This is DBT, and these are the rooms. And alright, let's continue playing some more Hot Wheels Unleashed 2, or is it Hot Wheels Turbocharged Unleashed 2? Whatever it is. Let's continue playing this thing. And right now I'm driving the BMW M3 something something. I'm sorry, I don't know exactly what this is called, but it's a BMW and it has a ginormous wing, so I like it. Um, but the reason for this video is actually not to show you this car, although at some point I will make some more videos on driving these cars, but no, it's actually to tell you about the new DLC, I suppose, microtransaction, whatever you want to call it, that was released for this game, which is the Style and Speed Pack, I think that's what it's called. And it caught my attention because it actually is the one that I was looking forward to the most, and I thought that I was going to have to wait half a year or longer before those cars were made available. And it's a pack that contains four cars, and oh boy, other beautiful cars so without further ado let me show you what that pack contains and we're gonna be driving them because oh man i gotta show them to you so up to this point this is where i normally have my vehicles that i have been acquiring in the game yes that's right i even got a bugatti chiron that we will explore at some other point but look at it oh so cool no 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 but the cars that i was excited for it's this oh boy that's right the 4 gt Mark II, or over here it's called 4GT Race, whatever it is, just look at it. Oh, even the livery, it's so cool. And by the way, this is the default livery. This is not something that someone did. In fact, I'm curious to see what overtime people are gonna make if they're gonna recreate other liveries for this car. But just look at it, it's absolutely fantastic. And I actually do have the diecast for this thing, both from Hot Wheels and in other brands. I really like this car, I'm so glad to see it. Then we also have another car that I like a lot, which is the Audi R8 LMS. Another car with a big wing, man. How could I not like this? Just, ah, so beautiful. We also have the Corvette C8R, another racing car with a big wing. Man, this this particular uh, pack of cars was made basically for me. And the last car is the Liberty Walk Silhouette Works GT Nissan 35 GTR R version 2, whatever. Jesus Christ, that's a long name. But yeah, this is the fourth car in the pack. Now, this is a pack that costs something like $5, I believe, so it's not especially expensive. And you get four cars out of it, so if you're willing to spend that for some virtual cars, well, there's the opportunity. But man, I'm so glad to see this, because in case you don't know, the 4GT is one of my favorite non-Lambo cars of all time. And the race version of the 4GT is even crazier with that ginormous wing and all of that. So yes, we're going to be trying this, by the way, I haven't upgrading, upgraded them at all, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. Now, for the longest time, I have said that I've never been a huge fan of the engine sounds in this game or the previous one. But actually, the, the, the sound for this one isn't too bad. Just listen to this. Give it a second. Hold on, hold on. You'll listen to it. Once we get out of all the noisy sections. Honestly, I don't think that's, that's too bad. I think that's pretty alright. And we're going upside down because reasons. Um, don't worry, there there will be more opportunities for you to listen to the prompt. That is an unfortunate thing of this game that you cannot change the engine volume. Um, there's only basically two sliders. Sound effects and music. So I had to disable the music for copyright situations just in case I'm, I'm wary about it. But yeah, unfortunately you cannot make the, the engine louder. But listen to this. It's actually not bad. I, I mean, again, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that this is an absolutely amazing engine sound and that I think this is the best thing that they've ever done or anything, but it's honestly not too terrible. I think it sounds pretty all right and the car itself looks absolutely beautiful. That is one of the things that I keep repeating myself on regarding this game, that I really, really like how they made the cars in this game to look like the toys. They didn't want to overmodel it to make it look like this is not the, 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 the toy version of the car. I love it. I love it. They look weird, chunky, big parts and all of that. Oh, oh it's so beautiful. And like I said, I do own the diecast of this thing. Not this particular livery. I do have it in several other uh, liveries. But it's still, let me tell you, it certainly looks exactly like this. So that's pretty good to see. So for GT overall, I'm not going to try to even comment on the performance of the car because performance of the cars in this game, it's always something extremely subjective simply by the fact that they never added and they never will, apparently, add a speedometer so you don't really get to know what is the exact top speed. Um, so the whole thing is extremely subjective, but what I can tell you is that this feels good. But of course, as I mentioned, I'm going to show you all of these cars. And here we go with the Audi. Look at those mirrors. They look horrendous. And that's exactly how they're meant to look in the 
in the actual die cast. That's what I was saying that I like about this game, that they don't try to model it so that they look insane or anything hyper detailed. No, they model them in a way so that it looks like a die cast would. And I really, oh Jesus, I really appreciate that. Now, honestly, the liver in this particular vehicle, it's one that I think it's a bit weak. But that's another thing that they do in this game, and that is not to over-design the liveries and instead try to replicate liveries that they did in the actual diecast. But, of course, then there's going to be people who are going to be creating some really detailed ones, and I'm looking forward to that. Because, I mean, look at all the detail that you could add. Though, there are some limitations as to how and when you can... Um, which parts you can paint, like, for example, you cannot paint or put decals on top of the quote-unquote glass, or meaning the trans transparent plastic part. Oh, I never knew what this thing does. Eh, it's fine, it's fine. Engine sound for this car, by the way, not extremely amazing in my opinion. It's actually even quieter than that of the 4GT somehow, which I don't love that, but hey... Man, I was really hoping that in this version of the game, they were going to... That guy just got past me like that, huh? Um, that they were gonna finally add a slider for the engine volume, but they didn't. And I gotta say, I do be a little bit disappointed about that. But seriously, I was so happy to see this DLC come out. And I'm gonna call it DLC. I mean, what is the difference at this point between DLC and microtransaction? I'm not even sure anymore. Because DLC used to be when in, in a game you would get like a... Oh, this mother lover just pushed me. Um, ah, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> Did you see that last second save? Uh, when you would buy like, hey, here's another new levels and whatnot and all of this. Did that guy just do a wheelie? But nowadays DLC can just be whatever tiny little bit. So DLC, I don't think necessarily represents a big... Um, amount of content anymore dlc can literally just be a tiny little thing but hey over here i got four cars like i said it was about five dollars and i didn't even think once about about it the moment that i saw it i'm like it's mine because i thought they were going to be selling this car separately and they uh they're selling i don't know which other car it is that they're selling some special version of the whatever car um, and they sell it for like two dollars. So I thought, oh geez, each one of these cars is gonna be two dollars. I mean, don't get me wrong. Consider, well, comparing to prices of cars in something like Asphalt 8, two dollars is absolutely nothing. But still, but no, instead five dollars, you get four cars. I mean, it still comes down to being a little over a dollar, but it's not too terrible. But yeah, there it is, the Audi LMS. Oh, so good. Okay. And now let's have a look at the Corvette C C. 8R, is that what it is? Yes. And man, this one really, really surprised me with the with the turbocharger sound. You're, you're listening to this, don't worry. There's no way you're gonna miss them. I'm really looking forward again, like I said, to the liveries that people are gonna be making for all of these cars. Silly that I'm still playing a game that it's all about them fantasy cars and I'm still obsessed over the the real ones but hey what can i do i like them cars with big wings and to be fair i also like the fantasy cars with the big wings so i refuse to take criticism over it <laughs> engine sound good good but come on give me a good place to listen to that oh did you hear it oh i love it so much a bit of a jump we're fine Oh, did you hear that? Man, those sound absolutely dope. And I love that they're pretty loud, too. Turbocharger sounds are always something to enjoy. Uh -huh. And honestly, as far as the performance of the car itself, it's not that I'm going to be able to tell you, like, oh, this actually drives so much better than that of the car, and then anything like that. Nah, absolutely no idea. Because I think this game was indeed set up in a way so that just about any car will be viable so long as you drive it well enough. And that's not me obviously saying that, oh, I'm not such a good driver that I'm winning in the first place. Although, I think I am playing on a slightly harder difficulty than the default. But, no, it's just that, in general, it doesn't seem that cars have enough, of a, of enough difference between them where they would be extremely significant. So it's not like, oh, this car is so much faster than that one, so why would I use this one or anything like that? I think it's bal balanced precisely in a way so that you get to use whatever car you want, um, and it should be somewhat usable, somewhat competitive. 
Or that's what I believe. Honestly, I, I don't know because I don't know the inner workings of this this game and the engine and whatnot, but that seems to me to be the case. And this is something that Big Show mentioned to me a very, very long time ago when I was playing the first game. He was like, yeah, I think that was by design to make this game just appealing to everybody, especially kids. And instead you have a 30-something-year-old guy um, playing the game right now. So <laughs> what can I say? We like what we like, okay? I will, I will not be ashamed for liking them diecast vehicles. They look cool, kind of. Charming, endearing, I would even dare to say. But all right, that's the Corvette C7, no, C8R, 7R. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. It's the one in Asphalt This is a different model. It's fine, because it's time to swap to another one. Now, I've said it a bunch of times also that I'm not super huge into um, Japanese cars and all of that JDM stuff. So this car doesn't necessarily excite me a lot. But I'm not trying to say this is, it's bad or anything. I just really, I'm not into this type of thing. But I would imagine that probably a bunch of people were very happy to see this car being added. And like I said, the fact that they're all added in the same DLC or whatever, um, I think that's that's super dope. Super dope. Now, there's been already another DLC that was released before this, which was the Accelerators, I think. It actually, had, I believe that that DLC was available from the day that the game was released. So you can tell that definitely they they wanted to to monetize it further by selling you things that were already ready in the game but well sadly that's just standard practices for the games nowadays and i don't think that no matter how much we complain about it that that is not going to change so in a way we're powerless to just live with whatever they decide upon us but eh. the price to pay for playing the games that we want but anyway um sound of the engine can barely hear it so i can tell you why don't you tell me in the comments if you think this is a good somewhat accurate sound to what the car is supposed to sound like because i legit have absolutely no clue and maybe i'm gonna say like oh it sounds actually okay when it turns out that it's horrible and they're gonna be like dbt you don't know what you're talking about you don't know these cars how dare you talk about them you're besmirching their name and their sound to which i'll say maybe because i don't know <laughs> um but yeah Interesting DLC, like I mentioned before, it seems that there's not going to be a single Lamborghini car in this game The same way that there wasn't any in the in the first one, which makes me honestly sad But hey, at least I have the 4 GT and the Corvette C8R So, hey, not complaining, of course, the Audi element like I, like I was saying, this is the only car that I'm not particularly excited about But hey, maybe you are, and if you are, let me know in the comments uh, A little bit of jump good but yeah overall i this is one of these games that i am willing to spend some additional money on to support the game and also obviously to get some goodies i'm not saying that oh this is just out of the kindness of my heart but yeah there's this is one of those games that i really don't mind at all spending money to to get some of the new goodies and to support the game developer now all the races that i just did were in quick race i'm gonna try this it's a it's a time attack and I need to beat a time of 42 seconds, but I can only use swift vehicles. And unfortunately, actually, I just realized that ah, I thought wrong. I thought these cars were were swift, but they're not. They're rockets. Never mind. I'm not doing this race then. OK, change to a different race, though. It seems I don't know. Is this a good or bad? Oh, wait a second. This is the exact same track that I was just driving at. Ah, Jesus. Well, at least I'm familiar with. It. But they recommended me to bring a heavy duty vehicle. Look at that bike. Looks like it's for a giant. But instead, I brought the 4 GT. How could I not, man? How could I not bring this beauty? Just look at it. Seriously, that this diffuser is ridiculous, and I love it for it. But yeah, it's um, it's good for 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 me to see finally that this this was added again as a bit of a surprise. Because I didn't think they were gonna be added so soon, and I'm very glad for it. Other than this, I don't think that there's a whole lot of cars that I'm super excited that are. That were basically leaked as to what else was coming in the game. I'm not gonna tell you exactly what it was because honestly, I don't remember. And probably there were still a couple of cars that I would be interested in getting. But be being able to get uh, the, the the 4 GT uh, to to well, basically to get all three except for the for the Nissan because again, I didn't care too much for it. In one single pack right away. Oh, that that was pretty dope. So. That does absolutely make me happy, and at least now you have seen and heard, hopefully, if the volumes were good, you've heard what the, the car sounds like, and in terms of performance, who knows, 
I will be upgrading this eventually though. I'm not particularly in love with the upgrading system in this game because of the whole thing of, hey, it will improve in this, but then it will get worse at this other thing. It was kind of like that in the first game too, just not as quote unquote in depth. But yeah, it always had some trade of like, you would upgrade the Nitro on a particular card and it will be like, yeah, you're upgrading the Nitro, but actually it will go from a bar of Nitro to pips of Nitro. Do you like that? Are you willing to do it? And in fact, I didn't do it in some situations because I, depending on the car and what I'm trying to do, sometimes it's better to have a bar of Nitro, but hey, whatever. The point is that the upgrading in this game is a little bit similar where, oh, now your, your, your car charges faster on the drift, but makes the drift worse, or it makes the drift better, but it charges worse. So it's like a no objective um, advantage for you. It's, it's a give and take and I don't know, I gotta think about it hard before I decide to commit like, yeah, I wanna make this car drift worse or whatever. But I guess we'll see in due time. Oh, this bike is right, has been right behind me for all this time and I can shake it up. And I keep saying that it looks ridiculous. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, I'm gonna survive this round, barely. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Wasn't trying to pit maneuver him, it just happened. But I absolutely need to beat that bike. Uh-oh. I don't know that I can. I don't know that I can. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. No, no, got no more nitro. Okay, well, at least I finished in the top three, so that already completes the objective for the mission itself. At some point, I'll beat it on first place. But there you have it. That is the DLC with the new cars. What do you think about it? Are you gonna get this? Is it, does it look interesting to you? Or you're like, nah, I'm not paying for this car. Just look at that for you, beautiful. That's gonna do it for this video. Why don't you check these other videos that I made on this game? Man, it's a lot of fun. And I even tried multiplayer and it got interesting. Very weird and interesting. But that's all, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.